On December 14th, 1941, a lone Italian submarine left Leros in Greece, bound for the port of Alexandria. On board, she carried six men and three human torpedoes that would bring the British Mediterranean fleet to its knees. This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream, an online subscription streaming site that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you sign up between November 16th and January 3rd, you can get 25% off a yearly subscription. More on this later on. For Admiral Cunningham of the Mediterranean Fleet, the last few weeks of 1941 were not kind. On November 25th, the battleship HMS Barham was torpedoed and sunk by U-331, with the loss of more than 800 sailors after a fatal explosion. Three weeks later, on December 14th, the cruiser Galatea suffered the same fate. She was swiftly followed by a squadron that ran into a naval minefield a few days later, with four more pressure ships sunk or badly damaged. This is before we even mentioned the declaration of war by Japan, which further stretched the Royal Navy. Against this backdrop then, a single Italian submarine, Shirei, set out from Greece, aiming to inflict a knockout punch on the Mediterranean fleet. It would do so with a handful of human torpedo submersibles from the 10th Assault Vehicle Flotilla, an elite naval commander unit of which Shirei was a part. The flotilla had been active all over the Med during 1941, with its biggest success before December being the sinking of the cruiser HMS York in Suda Bay in Crete. Their targets for the December operation were much more ambitious. It was a 1,700 mile journey to Alexandria, and Shire was forced to spend a large portion of it submerged due to a storm and the need to avoid detection by the British. In the final stint, as they approached Egypt, Shire's skipper, Frigate Captain Junior Borghese, led his ship in a 16-hour painstaking underwater approach, navigating blindly beneath minefields. Finally, at about 6pm on December 18th, Shire arrived at a position 1.3 miles out from the lighthouse at Ras Al Tin. Borghese was only 4 feet off from his intended arrival position. Two hours later, after darkness had fallen completely over the North African coast, he released his cargo three human torpedoes, each crewed by two men. The torpedoes carried large explosive warheads which could be placed below the hulls of large capital ships to cause extreme damage. Three such ships were the target for that evening's attack. Luigi de la Penne and Emilio Bianchi would target HMS Valiant, Antonio Marceglia and Spartaco Shergat, her sister ship, the Queen Elizabeth. Thirdly, Vincenzo Martellotta and Mario Marino would look to destroy the aircraft carrier Eagle. Setting off together, the three torpedoes initially followed the Rassel Tin breakwater. As they reached its southern end, they paused for 30 minutes or so, having arrived well ahead of schedule. The team also now had the issue of how to get past the British harbour defences, which included torpedo nets as well as a motorboat dropping depth charges at random intervals. The British had long been aware of the threat from mini submarines and manned torpedoes, and had taken extra precautions around the harbour. But happily for the Italian frogmen, luck was on their side. Just as they needed to get inside the harbour, three British destroyers returned to port and the defences were lowered to allow safe passage. The Le Penne's team stuck close to them, coming so close they could hear the conversations of sailors on deck but remained unseen in the dark ocean. Once the Italians had arrived inside the harbour, the three teams split up to find their respective targets. De La Penne passed close to the French battleship Lorraine before coming across Valiant fairly quickly. Emilio Bianchi swam to the torpedo netting and pushed it down enough for their craft to pass over it at 2.19am. For the final distance, De La Penne submerged to 15 feet and crawled slowly towards the battleship. Just as they arrived though, disaster struck. The propeller of the human torpedo became snagged on a steel cable and dragged to Le Penne and Bianchi 55 feet down to the bottom of the harbour. Bianchi's breathing equipment almost immediately failed so he surfaced, leaving De Le Penne alone to struggle with the torpedo. For 40 agonising minutes he pushed it closer to the Valiant's hull 
in total darkness as his mask filled with water and his breathing equipment induced terrible stomach cramps. Eventually, the torpedo rested directly under the ship's keel. That was good enough. The timer was set and De La Pene surfaced. Together, he and Bianchi tried to make good their escape, but as they set off, a searchlight snapped on and a warning burst of machine gun fire rang out. They were captured and taken ashore. Elsewhere, Antonio Marceglia and Spartaco Shiga, targeting Queen Elizabeth, were having an easier time of it. Locating the battleship easily as it was silhouetted against the lights of the shore, the pair moved in and planted their explosives at around 3.15am. Aside from a minor scare with the searchlight, they reached the shore without incident, buried their breathing gear and moved off on foot. This just left the third pair, Vincenzo Martellotta and Mario Marino, who were charged with attacking HMS Eagle. They quickly ran into a big problem. She wasn't there. Eagle, in fact, had departed Alexandria that day, destined for the Indian Ocean. With no aircraft carrier now to target, Martellotta and Marino looked for something else. A nearby light cruiser was discounted as being too small before they came across a group of tankers. Martellotta picked out the largest, the 16,000 ton Sagona. Reaching the tanker without issue, Marino dived down to attach the warhead at 2.15am. There was then another stroke of good fortune, when the British destroyer Jervis arrived to begin refuelling, blissfully unaware of the ticking bomb just metres away. The third Italian team soon reached the shore and set off, but were not as lucky as Marceglia and Shirgat. Martellotta and Marino were arrested by Egyptian custom guards as they tried to sneak out of the harbour zone. After two hours, they were turned over to the British, and a Royal Navy commander arrived to interrogate them at about 10 to 6 in the morning. At 5.55 though, just as the British officer began his questioning, a massive explosion rang out from Sagona's mooring. The tanker and the destroyer next to it were engulfed in smoke and spray. On board Valiant at the same time, De La Pene and Bianchi found themselves locked up after several hours of refusing to tell the British the location of the bomb they had just planted. At 6.04 it detonated, ripping an 80 foot gash in the side of the battleship's hull and inducing a heavy list. The trio of explosions was completed at 6.15 when a huge explosion ripped Queen Elizabeth's hull open and smashed three of her boiler compartments to bits. At Alexandria Railway Station, Marceglia and Shergat overheard the explosions and shook hands. They would be captured the following day, but the scale of their success made this almost irrelevant. For the loss of just six men captured, the Italian Navy had sunk a large oil tanker, damaged a destroyer, and taken two capital ships out of commission for months. It was a stunning victory that dramatically flipped the naval balance of power in the Mediterranean. With the loss of Valiant and Queen Elizabeth, and Barham, and the earlier losses, Admiral Cunningham's fleet now consisted of just three light cruisers and a handful of destroyers. It was a far cry from the fleet that had wiped out an Italian cruiser division at the Battle of Matapan seven months before. The frustration for Captain Borghese and others on the Italian side was that the Axis powers did little with their newfound naval superiority after December 1941. Naval actions through 1942 largely revolved around Allied convoys to Malta, but Italian capital ships were not often deployed aggressively and no serious attempt was made to take Malta, which Borghese thought was the obvious course of action. It was reflective of Axis priorities that Borghese and the Italian frogman's next deployment was to the Black Sea for actions against the Soviet Union. For the Royal Navy, the raid on Alexandria was the final act in a dramatic and costly year of battles in the Mediterranean. A large number of ships had been sunk or damaged for little discernible gain. Malta had been preserved and victory at Matapan won, but it had been a heavy price to pay. And with the entry of Japan into the war, Things were about to get much worse for the British Empire before they got better. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore and understand. There are thousands of documentaries available. For example, 1929 takes an in-depth look at the Wall Street crash and its huge effects on the interwar world. You can get 25% off a yearly subscription by signing up with the code HISTORIOGRAPH between November 16th and January 3rd.
That's unlimited access for only $14.99 a year. So use code Historograph when you sign up and get 25% off your yearly subscription.